welcome to today's session uh, this is david uh, from the innovation community from thinkly and uh, today we look at uh, what is service design and how do we apply design thinking to service industry what's really different between a product design and service design and basically uh, how do we really work with a lot of um, uh, you know improvements in the in the service space um and also we look at some examples on applications in industry also today uh, so let's begin and let me share my screen and we can immediately deep dive so we look at uh, how do we craft these un unforgettable services for our customers and stakeholders part of service design thinking so essentially if you look at design thinking is look at product design very different from what we know as service design thinking and this is part of uh, the thinkly innovation community and uh, request everyone to uh, be active on the community ask questions and as we go through today's workout also uh, please do uh, you know put in your chat remarks questions um, as we as we go through right uh so my name is david um been uh, uh, been a co-founder of iris innovate and been into design thinking consulting firms for design thinking and innovation in particular uh, specifically human centered design also today's module co-created by uh, eshpal is the co-founder of um, iris innovate uh, level 3 certified in inventive thinking um and um, very innovative in terms of development of uh, interactions with clients and uh, also coming up with solutions which are innovative you know as we walk through various clients uh, today's uh, in service design if you have to read more uh, on the material for today uh, and we have referenced this book and i would highly recommend for further readings uh, this is service design thinking by stigdon and snyder Uh, it's an excellent book uh, highly recommended gives a lot of lucid examples on service design thinking and you will see a lot of today's material is referenced from this book um, but highly recommend for further readings uh, when you are implementing service design in your respective organizations and even want to learn more so what is service design um some definitions on service design if you look at uh, look at service design is a holistic way for a business to gain comprehensive empathetic understanding of customer needs uh, how do you really identify customer needs and if you observe very carefully it does not say go and ask the customer and figure out what your needs are so that's the worst way that you can actually get the needs uh research has indicated that consumers customers do not know or aren't able to articulate their needs but there is an inherent need and service design looks at a holistic way it's not just a pointed entity it looks at multiple facets of this need of the consumer and the stakeholder and getting an empathy point of view so it's all based the human need the human empathetic framework that we reference um uh, in our earlier talks also uh, so this is uh, one very nice definition other definitions if you look at service design thinking is service design is all about making service uh, you deliver useful usable efficient effective and desirable you see multiple facets of service design so and many of the metrics are usually uh, drawn around some of these facets and qualitative kind of aspects of service so useful to the end consumer stakeholder usable it's easy to use one is use an outcome and but it is not only use an outcome it is very uh, you know convenient for people to work through efficient also it's not that it takes a lot of resources it takes minimum resources because you need to have the business angle inside also very effective to deliver outcome basis business outcome basis tangible outcomes and desirable something that we want so when you marry these multiple facets you come to what is known as design thinking uh, by the uk design council uh, this definition very nice definition that they have given 
there are certain aspects of service design which uh, articulate so now we are just spending some time on what really differentiates a service design in a product design and if we understand this difference well what it does it it helps us to select the right kind of techniques like i mentioned also design thinking has more than some 200 300 or multiple techniques so the whole question is what should i be using and is it the right technique to use in some way so if we understand service design per se and we understand this multiple principles so the objective is to understand what is different in service design and therefore enable us to take the right call when we use the techniques in some way right and uh, here we look at various aspects so it's user centered we look at each as we walk through it's user centered focus on the end customer user co creative not only looks at one stakeholder looks at multiple stakeholders and takes their input sequencing in a service time is an important aspect unlike the product the usage uh, uh, of the service so the time aspect the sequence of activities and events which follow become very important uh, evidencing because it's many times this service is something which is non tangible you can't touch and feel so how do you make this uh, this thing evident in front of people as they experience it so that they notice it in some way and also holistic it has to be on a wider scale in some form so you see we we'll look at some of these aspects and we we'll look at some of the aspects and then go towards the questions i see there are some questions coming in we we'll look at some each of these in particular and uh, so we we'll look at user centered so like you know design thinking is all got to do with customer rise but one of the key aspects of service design of service per se is the customer participation uh, for delivery so service cannot be delivered without the customer's participation so the delivery of service from the organization's perspective say a hotel or or a call center or an aircraft onboarding is all got to do with service Uh, the delivery of service and the consumption is happening simultaneously so the customer is also a part of the delivery of the service in a way and uh, the things like you know design consultancy or public transport operations customer is an integral part and unlike tangible goods services are not standardized and cannot be stored so that's a very critical difference it cannot be standardized you can't have a standardized iso standard on service that you provide of course you try and put some requirements on on it but then you have a wide canvas to design something excellent in large number of ways uh, and uh, so it's user centered so you need to have the customer in mind and there's a lot of interactions that happen between customer and the service provider um and that's that's the key and it's not that uh, you know it 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 can be standardized for a particular type of customer there are different types of customers coming in the second one is co creative so the aspect here is that all stakeholders need to be included in the service design process you cannot develop it only for a particular type so for example i am providing the services for uh, say uh, the hotel industry and providing some services for the hotel industry uh, or say hr onboarding process it's a service hr is providing a service now when we look at it the design of the process or the system that is providing the service has to be robust enough for different types of employees i cannot have an onboarding process of course it will be different but the entire difference say for a ground level employee or a senior staff or technical a staff or technical b staff or from a vertical which is different the base design has to be very similar right and similar when i look at a, a hotel industry i can I, in the country large is like india and across you know i need to have different thought process i can have customers coming in from tier 2 tier 3 cities also into the main city and vice versa also so uh, and then you speak regional tongue <laughs> regional languages so how do i really cater for that you know so the important aspect is it has to look at multiple stakeholders the diverse needs and try to integrate this all you know? and it requires a lot of uh, staff from your side also like in cases you have front office back office employees managers non hr human resources interface technology coming in 
it becomes a huge kind of a complex system that is gets developed i personally feel uh, service design is a much complex kind of a challenging structure than product design in large number of ways product design has a lot of standardized guidelines to follow uh, but uh, service design per se uh, is is pretty complex because you have a lot of entities interacting simultaneously okay. the third one is sequencing very interesting in terms of sequencing is um, as a sequence of interrelated actions your each step say for example a customer comes to the uh, you know check in counter in the hotel and the you know you ask them to for their uh, details and uh, your details about your pan card or aadhar card and about your stay and payment and so there are this string of activities that really happen which are all interrelated it's not isolated in them and there's a time sequence that it happens so time adds another different dimension to the whole complexity that we have uh, because uh, sometimes being uh, fast is also a problem so for example you you visit somewhere for food and you order for food and food comes within say one and a half minute so you get really suspicious about whether it was created before and unless it's a buffet uh, otherwise and, and there could be certain areas where a delay actually causes a big problem like you could be at the airport check in counter and a delay there of one one and a half hour really messes up the whole experience even before the journey begins so sequencing in terms of time and the time aspect brings you a lot of uh, complexity within the whole arena and that makes it really interesting and challenging evidencing uh, another important aspect you see service itself is something that you experience so how do you make it make the time intangible tangible in some form so uh, many times you may have say uh, housekeeping staff or back end technical staff who do not directly interact with the customer but it is nonetheless it is very important for the entire experience so how do you make it tangible how do you make people's experiences better with it or give some evidences of certain outcomes that yes staff is taking care of you there's a personal as entity you see a lot of uh, in the luxury industry you will see that uh, you know if there's a preference of a of a customer for a certain room and a certain setup every time the person checks in there's no need for you to really request for the changes is already done and that's done because the back end staff is working towards it but you see the evidences when you actually enter the room or certain aspects of it in some way and that's what really customizes service to a large extent right so you see a lot of evidence in coming in uh, and the final one before we uh, look at is the holistic picture is a systems view so you need to have a big picture because the service is not part of just a string of actions is also got to do with a lot of other aspects the ambiance uh look at physical entities the design of physical products the setup the dressing of people how they are uh, you know the body language um, the technology and how well the technical support is there or experience in the user experience comes inside so you see that uh, there are a lot of these entities which are involved and therefore uh, when we say i had a memorable experience and customer says that i had a memorable experience what is that experience that experience is a string of events which exist in the entire holistic manner across different product lines across different setup and the ambience and the speed and different aspects of it which is very difficult to quantify sometimes if you ask what did you like about it say i had a very good experience and there is so what did you like about the experience many customers find it very difficult to articulate what did you like and they often go to time or courtesy in some way but i personally feel it's not only these two three or three four things that you normally hear it's it's is still deeper and that's the systems view of stuff right uh, so before we go ahead so i looked at uh, now i we just looked at some of the aspects of service design which is different from product design and which really articulates the next section we we'll look at how do you blend this into a journey uh, into a service design thinking journey are there certain specific techniques which are very apt for service design we'll have a look at some of those and then couple of examples so let me just 
stop sharing here i'll take some questions and quite a few questions that are there in the chat we'll look at three four questions and then proceed as we move through right great so we have first question we have from uh, aniket rao uh, in your opinion what role does user centricity play in crafting unforgettable service experience i think uh, the what role does the user centricity play i think it's a pivotal role because um, i would not say only user centricity uh, it's also got to do with user uh, uh, obsession in some way because you are not only user centered you get obsessed with the user and the customer and the multiple types of customer so there's no excuse saying that here is a different type and a different requirement of the customer and therefore my design could be insufficient for them and i need to really uh, look at everybody the overall classic example of course it comes from the product and the experience so sometimes the product and the experience cannot be differentiated uh, so when we looked at g developing their famous uh, you know scanning machine mri machine uh, the product was beautiful but what was happening was the experience part of it now you may say that the machine is in develop for children and therefore it will not be apt for children and they will be really uh, unhappy with it in some form that could happen but then it's an excuse uh, because you never looked at the user centricity in your design so the service element many times get interwoven also but i think user centricity is the core and in design thinking customer obsession need is as always been the pivotal entity of uh, really building lot of beautiful experiences as such right aisha if there's a follow up question please do ask huh? so that help really helps uh, aisha patel uh, her question uh, how do you think involving end users in the design process impacts the overall memorability of the service um uh, it's a good question here you look at how do you involve end users in the design process so involving end users in the design process can happen in multiple phases of the design thinking journey uh, right up from trying to discover their needs you start involving we look at some techniques in design thinking uh, wherein you do what is called as contextual inquiry uh, in this technique you are working along with the end customer to really discover specific needs and nuances which are there right so uh, the the you could use the end user for that many times the end user is also a part of the prototype testing so for example i come up with a say in an airlines and different differential experience uh, for the customer when they are um, you know say having their meals or when they are within the aircraft and traveling so rather than just sitting and just looking at the screens i want to create some kind of a memorable experience for them and and maybe somebody comes up with a different experience and a different model and a design so how do i know that this meets the end customers or travelers needs the only way you will come to know is through doing a prototype test of a service design for a customer involving the real time customers in 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 time so i think these two areas are very prominent uh, where end customers come in of course there's a third where uh, you involve the customers also which is called as co creation in co creation what happens is as you create the solution design so you want to create a differential experience say for uh, escalation management say for a telecom firm and that's the escalation management is a process it's a service that you provide or say claim processing for a life insurance firm many times you would involve what we call as lead users or people who expect so much from the entire business uh, into the solutioning model so they not only participate in need understanding or validation of solution they also enter inside as a participant in the solution design per se and usually uh, these are not just consumers or customers of yours they may be uh, customers who are lead users lead users meaning they typically are 
have a very high benchmark and uh, that becomes a uh, uh, you know a criteria for them to participate in the solution design and they come up with some excellent design it's called as co creation so these are different areas where you could really leverage consumers or customers expectation in service design right so another question here coming from rajesh so from your experiences what are the key differences between a service that fades from memory and one that remains vivid long after the interaction uh, again a very good question rajesh uh, i think the key difference is what we typically call as the aha moment in that aha moment that wow kind of a experiential element and uh, when we say the aha moment is easier to say the aha moment than really but very difficult to really blend it into a service service design this aha moment can only occur in the service design and becomes memorable in people so what do you really seem as memory if you go back you know so what really seems a very good if i ask you what was what was the uh, you know which experience in which airlines really is memorable to you and why so if you reflect back it is never the case where the regular situation is being handled in a way right um in a way uh, say for example the check in the experience in check in or the experience in boarding and security and others is only when it becomes memorable is you do something different for the customer which you never exp expected the customer never expected right so imagine you are traveling and uh, you know the airline has a database and they understand that you know it's your birthday or it's your anniversary and they celebrate it uh, for you at the moment you never expected the airlines to be doing it in some form and none of them do it but then somebody did it for you uh, and uh maybe and you see a lot of these videos where people are from the security forces and they are boarding on the on the, they are there on the flight and you acknowledge them and it becomes a aha moment people really experience wow wow means you know uh, i have somebody really acknowledging my work in some form uh, of course within the boundaries of the pieces is not that you start dancing within the aircraft island that's not to be done but Uh, within within the piece, so that becomes memorable. So what is the the element of memorability really essentially is there is a trigger which you never expected, and there's an impulse which stays with you forever, in a way. And that will only come when the customer never expected something but got it in a moment. Say for example, there is a life insurance claim when somebody really, and in the, these experiences are very important also. Uh, is uh, say somebody an earning member of the family has expired. and uh, uh, there is no other earning member and there's a wife who is not working and the children who need to be taken care of and there's a term policy now should i be so normal experiences my now the whole agony has to start you know again for the family uh, but if i am able to and that's what organizations do is they realize that is just not timing that i am looking at it's got to do with experience so i should not i should get the minimum amount of evidences for me to do the payout and if it's a term policy where the risk is very very low for me and as long as i have evidences which i know from the background which i can articulate i will not go and trouble the customer to give me information because they are passing through an agony kind of a phase and what happens if with the least amount of agony the payout gets done quickly for a customer who is not able to read english well who is a regional customer and uh, a phone call just does that or maybe something that on the just a clip of the debt certificate does that and you just post it or whatsapp it which simple people can do in regional languages and that becomes a wow so something which you do extra over and above brings in the wow situation the other area where situation becomes memorable is there is something that went wrong and somebody went out of the way to really address the situation and recover the situation for you and that becomes memorable so that's very important that you build processes which are robust enough to take care of these hiccups and 
uh, you know things going wrong in certain ways and uh, that's what organizations like the taj uh, you know even with the incident that happened in the taj you had people who took care of the uh, of the guest through dramatic it was never that something like this is going to happen but uh, the whole ethos and the thinking is in a certain way so that if something happens it goes intuitive it is not that you need to be trained for doing something or something and that becomes really memorable for a lot of people uh, across the church yeah. great really one more question and then go ahead Uh, so jenny's uh, question here jenny is asking how do you approach understanding and empathizing with the end users and customers when designing a service and why is that step uh, crucial i think design thinking is wholly hinged on the understanding and gaining insights of customer needs and uh, we uh, in fact this is a good question because we will look at the next slides i am taking through is what are the techniques of design thinking which are apt that really helps you to understand the customer in the service design because that's the critical part and that answers the how question you know so how do i empathize so just talking to people or just listening to them or asking them questioning is not empathizing empathizing is much deeper and therefore you have to use certain techniques for you to empathize so what i will do is uh, i will quickly take you through some techniques on design thinking that helps you to empathize in the service design of course it can be but very apt for a service design thinking kind of an environment and let me take you to some of these techniques that really help okay so before we go ahead just a slide here on how the service design thinking itself work in a way uh, so you will see here there is a stage of exploration you explore the use end users their needs then you start creating um your solution design and then you reflect there is a reflection phase where you start critiquing your own work you start looking at validation of your solution designs with your customers and stakeholders and once that is done you it starts you move towards the implementation phase now if you look at this diagram very carefully you see a lot of arrows getting interconnected between both indicating that this is not a linear process nothing in design thinking is linear it you can move from one phase to the other phase so you explore you go towards creation and you find as you create something you have doubts on certain aspects you can again come back to exploration right you can again come back similarly if you move towards creation and then reflection you start reflecting and validating some of your solution designs and if they fail which we know as design thinking as fail fast you start getting that immediate feedback you can again come back and explore that's perfectly okay in a traditional form uh, of designing you would say that this is rework but in a design thinking this whole iterative form becomes the core and uh, the core not from a perspective of uh, saying that you could go wrong and therefore we should go wrong that's not a justification of being wrong in the right it, so there is nothing of using the wrong technique per se but you are you have you have the freedom to explore and move through and that i think brings about a safety net where you can innovate very fast right so these are the various stages and in these stages um, you could have lot of this exploration tools that i was mentioning some time back uh some techniques um highly used in the industry contextual interviews this is one technique so it looks at interviewing being conducted of your customer or the stakeholder in the environment in which the service is being provided right so you would naturally if say somebody is trying to troubleshoot an appliance and they have a problem with it and you know i'm trying to troubleshoot it so and the customer usually does that because they have an issue with an appliance so how do they go about it in order to understand i cannot ask the question i go there i uh, look at a sample i interact with the customers and really interview them at the scenario when they are trying to troubleshoot at that moment and that really helps you to understand the pains and gains um, very useful especially when there are complex situations where things like maintenance activities to be done people are struggling with 
online and also very useful when people do a lot of digital st stuff they interact with online techniques tools or apps you really be along with the customer and interview the customer as they go about doing stuff up so that gives you a lot of nice inputs the other technique here is fly on the wall observations slightly different so fly on the wall is slightly different uh, wherein uh, you observe the customer in the scenario where they are doing like for example the check in and the hotel or check in into a into your flight and you are waiting the queue and as you enter the airport what really happens so this is fly on the wall observation where you don't interact with the customer but you are acting like a keen observer at a safe distance away from the scene that is really happening so for example a customer is doing a check in at a counter um, what you would do is you would position yourself maybe 3 or 4 meters away from the counter such that you are inconspicuous in a way and you are just observing what is happening you could observe just beside the operator also where you know the check in is happening or just near the customer but at a safe distance where you don't intervene or intrude into the space and neither do you intervene if something is going wrong because you are just an observer so you don't you just keep on observing what is happening okay you don't guide you don't do anything with it you just observe and as you observe you find lot of new insights so you see fly on the wall is a technique another uh, very interesting one is uh, walk a mile immersion where you directly become the customer and you experience the entire journey so i want to go and um, buy a new vehicle and a car buying experience so i would become the customer randomly go to a showroom my showroom where i am really interested and then do this entire experience and figure this out with like a customer what what do i really experience right and there also there is no indicative of uh, trying to influence anybody or you know trying to change anything but you are just experiencing it in large number of ways so these techniques are very useful uh, for us uh, in terms of getting empathy and of course the other techniques like what if when you go to the solutioning space you look at what is what if i am creating a solution design where this whole service experience is dramatically different right uh, so like for example you look at the uber so you know what if rather than you trying to hunt for the vehicle the vehicle comes to you in a way right so you you ask this very powerful questions uh, which really impact how you re really design uh, the and similar what if are there in other industry lines also like like the swiggies of the world where you don't go to the restaurant to really have your food the food comes to you uh, in a way and and that becomes a new service design a new experiential element right so very powerful techniques and another very useful technique in service design is what is called as design scenario so what you create is rather than just writing as a solution what you do is you build the scenario and it could be in a digital form it could be in a physical form uh, so you use storyboards you use a lot of videos um, and leverage a uh, lot of props and other pieces and let the customer experience this all in a go so for example i want to change the setup for the check in counter uh, then uh, how would i redesign yeah, so that it's useful for the customer so i create the design scenarios which has lot of these other or you know self uh, self logging uh, self boarding kind of a coil which sometimes is very complex how do i make it simpler so i create a prop and let the customers use them and that helps me to make service more tangible and you know the people experience it in last number of days of course storytelling also very powerful kind of a technique uh which is used uh, storytelling essentially looks at how do you communicate uh, your solution design to people and then see the responses in terms of narratives in terms of insights that you gain from there and various aspects so rather than just telling that this is a solution you create a storyboard and you articulate in terms of what really happens in the time sequential element and you are able to communicate this off Uh, to your audience in a very powerful manner so that really and then look at the feedback so these are multiple techniques uh, which are used in service design in particular so what we looked at now is 
are that if i say that end user experience is important and empathy and user focus is important how do you gain empathy so you have these different techniques that helps you to leverage uh, you know a lot of these uh, ideas sir right so let me take some questions um, taking questions from the latest ones that is there so rashi um can you discuss an instance when a service exceeded your expectations what aspects contribute to this uh, remarkable experience so uh, instances where service exceeded your expectations right uh, so remember expectations setting is also very relative uh, what is a delight for a customer for one customer type or a customer segment or a customer persona may not be the same delight factor for somebody else it's all very relative uh, but um, where uh, i looked at you know the service experience the latest service experience if i may say so uh, not something which is very memorable you know so when i say memorable it can be positive or negative huh? so both are memories that they really stay uh, with it and uh, you would uh, the latest one that i had uh, yeah i think the one that really sticks to me memorable is slightly from a negative aspect in terms of what it could do and uh, this was when i was traveling in an aircraft i'll not name the operator this is still very active and uh, uh there was an instance where you know you have this um, meals being served and you have coffee and other pieces which is served to the guest and i was traveling in one of them and um what really happened is uh, i accidentally spilled the hot coffee on my uh, and spilled on my leg so i got some burns immediately i had to react at, uh, but uh, uh, staff noticed that something like this did happen but the reaction wasn't that it was so very important in a way because they were busy doing service to other customers and the whole aspect was i need to finish serving meals and collect all of the pieces up in a certain period of time uh, and therefore the whole obsession is with that and if something goes wrong in a certain way uh people find it very stressful so i think the uh, employees of that airlines uh, found it very stressful to manage my situation and i had to i was really on my own to really uh, figure out how best to really address that but there wasn't any assistance that emerged you know uh and i think that is what is really differentiating is how do in all, when everything is very good service remains to be beautiful you know you, you find it extremely good but uh, the whole test is when something goes wrong all right and um, the is like a stress test so whenever you do service design and you create processes for service design look at scenarios which are obtuse which do not happen very often which are negative in nature and if that process and the scenario and the solution that you are building is good enough for that right is good enough for that and it is able to handle it then you know the process is robust so always testing and validation of your solution design or service design should not be taken in scenarios which are regular in nature but rather obtuse right and that's what i really learned also from this experience is and and, and don't get worried that you may say that no this only happens for maybe one in a hundred times no the aspect is if it happens in one in 100 times of things happening and if it can be easily handled in the service design properly then all of the things in normal operating scenarios can get can be addressed properly in large number of ways so that's how you should look at service design okay uh, anand is asking question here when thinking about memorable services do you believe simplicity or complexity tends to have a more lasting impact and why yeah i think Uh, all beautiful solutions are simple by nature right uh, they have to be simple in nature so whenever uh, you have simplicity and elegance built 
inside your uh, service design it any which has become becomes memorable right uh, so we need not have multiple steps and complexity and other entities uh, <laughs> like for example let me uh, share with you an example uh, we were trying to develop um, a website for an organization and uh, then and it's a, it's a, it's a product it's a website is a product but then the whole process of developing the website and the interact you have interaction with people and the developer and the person who understand the need and the program manager and a lot of other aspects which come in is got to do with the experience as a service design how do you really interface with them with the how do the employees interface with the client for whom you are building the product now if i create a complex process where i have responsibility allocated to different set of people saying that okay you only look at design a you look at testing you look at program need understanding you look at program management and you dissect this off for the end customer i require a working website why i should be bothered with you having a process functional entity where these are dissected into different entities and there are different people with whom i have to touch this right now what you did is you created complexity in the entire piece sir and therefore the experience goes for a toss uh, but in the now if you look at lot of agile project management systems are in place wherein cross functional teams come together the interface with the client is better the experiences are better things start to get simpler and that increases the kind of the probability of you having a memorable experience but i think uh, a very simple elegant process steps uh, usually have a higher propensity for delighting uh, the customers because it goes faster it goes with lesser steps the involvement of the customer is lowest and you get an outcome at a very high speed right so that's very uh, important yeah. rashi's question here uh, she rashi is asking here can you discuss an instance when a service exceeded your expectations and aspects contributed to this remarkable experience yeah so exceeding expectations is again that kind of a wow kind of a scenario that i mentioned some time back and i mentioned something which is of a, a negative aspect uh, i think um a uh, wow scenario also comes in from uh, sometimes not following the processes also in some way right and i think one that i remember and they all come from travel because i was traveling quite heavily earlier um, i was at the charles de gaulle airport and uh, i was delayed by my flight and i was hopping from one side to the other flight and uh, <laughs> mind you the people at charles de gaulle were weren't so very courteous uh in a way in terms of understanding the urgency of the situation um, but uh, you know you had an indian airline there and i think it was jet or something at that time and or air india i'm not very sure uh but they knew that there were passengers and there were only two three who were hopping from a different flight but they they waited they, they so they, they they waited for for the time they could have taken off uh, but they waited for passengers to come in and uh, not only waited but they were eagerly looking out and trying to really figure out how do we get these passengers faster and get them out of trouble before to the flight so so one is that the employees extend over above the written rules and guidelines which are set for them in large and that requires a lot of empowerment of employees a lot of empowerment uh, to employees so Uh, employees who are empowered can only provide better services people who only follow guidelines and rules and regulation can never do a wow or experience in scenario at all in a way so organizations typically look at how do i empower the employee and that can only be done through having capable well trained and employees who have the power to take this deepa asking are there specific industries or sectors where you believe service design principles are underutilized but could make a significant impact yes there are uh, typically um, i would say the information technology it uh, services typically are seen more like a product design and a solution design kind of entity uh, 
they don't see they don't view themselves to be a service industry but actually there is a large component of theirs where they interact with the customers understand their needs uh, start interacting with them in a certain way uh, you know um, look at the experience and journey that really happens and not only just take the need and start developing it but go one step ahead and start discovering why do you really require what's the business impact and lot and that's exactly why you see a lot of uh, adopters large adopters in the indian scenario are all from the it it side uh, where they do product development and system development uh, and any other industry also like where you are providing a, a say for example uh, simple real estate kind of a business you know so you may say yeah i my key product is the space for you to live so it's the product is everything what is to do with the product uh, but uh, they don't really utilize service design to a large extent for them to really articulate so a lot of areas where we traditionally it is seen as a product but the industry is very cognizant of the fact that because the product has got standardized over so much of competition the only differentiating factor that will help you have higher margins is the value add that you provide and the value add usually comes in from a service design is what is a delta that differentiates you from another service provider that even does a you know so if uh, appliance and buying an appliance so when i'm buying an appliance is not only buying experience but also if there's a problem who really handles it and how is it handled so that part also is part of the brand image and a lot of people realize it but uh, in different business models it sometimes gets uh, defocused in large number of ways because they say i have outsourced it and therefore i don't have a control over it and as that happens then in any drop in service uh, say uh, your appliance or a washing machine has a problem and the, the service provider is outsourced by the organization and there if it lags uh, you as a customer aren't really worried whether it's the brand who provides or whether there's a, a subcontracted service provider that is doing the service for you uh, the brand suffers so the problem is that you buy the same brand of appliance the next time you have to brand you have to renew your appliance will be lower if your service is is, is bad and that's case right Okay, great. We'll take some more. I think one on one more question. How do cultural con considerations come into play while designing services for global or organizations? Very important because uh, service design has to take care of a lot of these nuances and subtle differences, which really happen. And uh, how do you really address it? Is a, a separate branch, I would say. in terms of service design but a very important aspect uh, not only for a country like us on a global level also because even if you look at for our country each state of ours is a different kind of a cultural identity yeah the the way that we speak the way that we communicate uh, the way people perceive body language is uh, totally different even within the country uh, uh, and such is the beauty Uh, so very important aspect and that builds in into the robustness of the design of service on how do you really communicate uh, many a times uh, in service design the way that we communicate either on the phone or customer communicate customer gets communication over the email and over the phone is typically drafted by people who uh, you know take it for granted that somebody else really is easy for them to understand and it may not be. i have an instance where you know you had uh, the email drafted for a insurance form by somebody coming in from the legal side and there were so many legal terms inside that for a normal person to read the email you never came to know whether the uh, whether the company was going to pay you money or not going to pay you money that aspect was hidden totally in lot of these kind of jargons which are there uh, so these kind of and experiences are very very important i think very very important kind of uh, aspect yeah. so one more we will take i think the final one gayatri is is looking at gayatri is asking here uh, rapidly changing business landscape how do you ensure that service design remains adaptable and resilient over time um i think if the design that you create when you create business processes and systems if they are robust they 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 are steady over a long period of time no need for you to validate 
but many organizations since customer needs and expectations and aspects that create a wow keep on changing dramatically you need to go and revalidate it whether the expectations have changed whether there is a trend that is influencing like you may see a digital trend influencing people's experiential needs which come in which takes a large amount there will be new technologies which are evolving that enable you to provide better service design uh, so you need to be on your speed because and this is very evidenced by what we know as the kano model the kano model where a must be becomes a delighter after some time so you may uh, a delighter becomes a must be i'm sorry a delighter becomes a must be after some time so you may get delighted because you know uh, somebody did x in when providing the services uh but after some time and look at time you know you may say that i could uh, get a new phone say 5 years back within 2 days uh, today um, getting the new phone within say 3 hours is the norm so if you say 2 days <laughs> you will be dissatisfied with the entire piece so a must be at a certain uh, delighter at a certain period of time has become a must be and therefore you need to be con- continuously on your feet right and people do that quite often organizations every 6 months a quarter or 6 months do a survey validate whether trends are moving look at new technologies so it, it remains continuously there right but uh, just uh, just uh, responding to fads also is a big problem because there could be fads which come in and then move out so if you respond too fast then it will become too complex and to dynamic for even customers to be uh, you know experiencing the service better because service always has to be predictable okay uh, it has to be predictable to a large extent and intuitive but if you change it basis pads which emerge it becomes very complex and dynamic right. so great thank you thank you so much uh, for for joining the session i hope you enjoyed today's session uh do pose your questions uh, be interactive on uh, the innovation uh, innovation community uh, we looked at design thinking and slowly we moved to different areas on applications of design thinking also thank you thank you so much for joining me